recognized. I thank uh, Chairman Chimpkus for leading in his help with this important legislation. This is going to be a, an interesting debate. This is a debate about one size fits all coming out of Washington, D.C. And you know, the failure of folks in this town at regulatory agencies to not appreciate nuance of what's going on in the rest of the country. I've been on these waste coal piles in western Pennsylvania. I have uh, seen streams that are dead. I've seen hillsides scarred. I've seen uh, uh, restoration. I've seen streams come back to life. I've seen hillsides come back to life. Uh, this satisfying energy needs and saving the environment, SENSE Act, makes sense for those who live outside the Capitol Beltway. The SENSE Act is a vitally important effort that I have championed in various forms throughout my time in Congress. The bill recognizes the huge success that the coal refuse to energy industry is making in Pennsylvania, and especially my district, to make it a healthier and cleaner place to live. Without the Sense Act, five coal refuse to energy facilities in western Pennsylvania and western West Virginia will close, and their environmental remedi remediation, remediation efforts will end. Despite, despite what this bill, the bill's opponents say, the Sense Act is first and foremost a pro-environment bill, but it's also a pro-jobs bill, a pro-union jobs bill, because it's union workers who are going to be thrown out of work when these plants close. And it's a pro-taxpayer bill, because the environment is being cleaned up without a contribution from the taxpayers. The coal industry has a long and storied history in Pennsylvania. Not only has it been an important part of the economy for generations, but Pennsylvania coal helped the U.S. and our allies win two world wars. Historic mining activity, unfortunately, left behind large piles of coal refuse. These piles consist of lower quality coal mixed with rock and dirt. For a long time, we did not have the technology to use this material, so it accumulated in large piles outside of cities and towns, close to schools, neighborhoods, fields across coal country. This has led to many environmental problems that diminish the quality of life for people in these areas surrounded by these piles. Vegetation and wildlife have been harmed, the air has been polluted, and acid mine drainage has impaired nearby rivers and streams. I've seen these sites firsthand, as I said, and the environmental danger they, they pose. Coal refuse piles can catch fire, think about that, catch fire with no emissions at all, limitations at all. It, it, it's unmitigated disaster when these things catch fire. Uncontrolled air pollution. Many are already smoldering, giving off toxic emissions, again, without any controls whatsoever. Runoff from these sites literally turn rivers orange, leaving them devoid of life. The cost to clean up all of this is astronomical. Pennsylvania's environmental regulator estimates that fixing abandoned mine, la mine lands could cost over $16 billion, over $2 billion of which would be needed for coal refuse piles alone. We needed an innovative solution to this tough challenge, a common sense compromise. This was necessary to get the job done and to protect the environment. That is where the coal refuse to energy industry comes in. Using advanced technology, this industry has been able to use previously worthless material to generate electricity. This activity is what powers remediation efforts and has successfully removed over 200 million tons of coal refuse, reclaiming polluted sites across Pennsylvania and other historic coal regions. Thanks to the hard work of the dedicated people in this industry, again, many union workers in this industry, Landscapes have been restored, restored, rivers and streams have been brought back to life, and many towns have been relieved of hazardous waste coal piles. Here's an example of what this industry has been able to do. 
Here, you have an abandoned waste coal pile. But through the restoration efforts, the countryside has been reclaimed. This is a picture of success done without taxpayer money, improving the environment. I want to highlight, again, private sector leadership on this issue that has saved taxpayers millions of dollars in cleanup costs. And if the Sense Act becomes law, taxpayers will continue to save millions. I should also note that the waste to energy industry pays millions, of, millions in tax dollars too, something that my colleagues should be mindful of because many of the plants in these areas are areas where, where there's still a struggle economically. Multiple groups have previously endorsed the Sense Act, including Pennsylvania's abandoned mine reclamation groups and clean water advocates. Unfortunately, intensifying and, importantly, inflexible EPA regulations threaten five plants in western Pennsylvania and West Virginia. This would leave hundreds of millions of dollars of vital cleanup unfinished, lead to job losses, and leave many localities exposed to the harmful conditions waste coal, waste coal piles grows. Mr. Speaker, we're talking a handful, a handful of plants. The, the, the sky is falling, the catastrophic scenario that opponents of this you know, legislation are arguing about, they don't appreciate the nuance of what we're trying to do here. The Sense Act, as it's been amended, addresses a significant challenge arising from the implementation of the existing, existing rules, including those under the mercury and, and air toxic standards. Importantly, these plants comply with, their, with mercury emission standard, standards. There is an issue with how they deal with HCl, hydrogen chloride, and sulfur dioxide, SO2. This is a targeted piece of legislation, a customization, as it were, to recognize the important and vital work that this industry has been doing. Contrary to what critics have alleged, the Sense Act simply provides operators with additional alternative MATS compliance standards, but it's still strict and it's still achievable. Despite opponents' claims, this bill is not a sweetheart deal for the coal refuse to energy industry. This bill only prevents a few plants from being regulated out of existence. This industry represents a tiny fraction of the energy industry but it provides enormous environmental benefits. Again, this, is a, this legislation brings a stark contrast, the difference between elites in this town and what's out there in flyover country, that you cannot even go in and see the, 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 the specific issue, and that you have to apply this one-size-fits-all because you're operating some from, it, some, from some ideological framework. It's really unfortunate because it's the environment that's going to hurt, it's jobs that are going to be lost. The industry works with the Pennsylvania Department of Environment, Environment, Environmental Protection to identify especially dangerous piles and prioritize remediation. The amended version of this bill accurately reflects the spirit of previous Sense Act versions, and I thank my colleagues on Energy and Commerce for their work on it. It is my hope that we can continue to build support for this bill, especially in the Senate, where Senators Toomey and Casey, Republican, Democrat, have previously offered a bipartisan amendment relating to it in the past. Despite that prior bipartisan Senate support, previous efforts have failed to achieve the supermajority necessary to pass, but I am hopeful that the Sense Act can win enough support to pass, pass both chambers. What we are looking to achieve today is this, narrow and limited addition to existing rules for a very small but pro-environment industry. This should not be a controversial or partisan issue. We want to hold this industry to high standards, but to standards they can actually reach.